This is Arkies in the Beltway, your look at national politics and the Arkansans influencing the discussions. I'm Alex Thomas, Washington correspondent for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, reporting from the nation's capital. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Arkies in the Beltway for the week of November 3rd, 2024. It is election week in Arkansas and across the United States. Candidates for local, state, and federal offices have been making their final pushes, hoping to win enough support in their respective races. Monday is the final day of Arkansas's early voting period. Polls will be open from 8 to 5. On Tuesday, election day itself, polls will be open at 7.30 that morning and remain open until 7.30 that night. A couple of Arkansans have been busy on the campaign trail, Former President Bill Clinton serving as a surrogate for Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. The former president traveling across the country, including to several battleground states. Senator Tom Cotton of Little Rock going across the country as well, campaigning on behalf of several Republican senatorial candidates. Last week alone involved trips to Nevada, Arizona, and Texas. Cotton says he wants to ensure Senate Republicans have not just a majority in Congress's upper chamber, but a healthy one. It'd be much easier to extend President Trump's tax cuts, to pass the farm bill, to pass the annual defense bill, to confirm judges that President Trump's going to nominate, maybe even a Supreme Court justice, and furthermore, to hold on to the majority in the 2026 midterms if we're defending not, say, 51 seats, but defending you know, 53, 54, or 55 seats. Neither Cotton nor Senator John Bozeman of Rogers are up for re-election this fall. Arkansas's four House of Representatives members are on the ballot, with opponents. J. Miles Coleman is the associate editor of Sabado's Crystal Ball at the University of Virginia Center for Politics. He doesn't expect Arkansas's House members to lose their seats, but he says it's worth watching Arkansas's election returns Tuesday night. I'd be interested to see if Harris can kind of take a place like Washington County, which Biden got within four or five points there last time. Uh, that used to be more of a solidly Republican county, but with the university there that is there, you are seeing some other pro-Democratic trends like you've seen in some other college towns across America. Coleman adds there is some unpredictability with which party will control the House next Congress. The Senate, however, will likely flip in Republicans' favor. I think at this point it would be at least... You know, a decent surprise if Republicans don't take the chamber. Democrats have controlled the Senate since January 2021. Arkansas's congressional delegation has multiple reasons to follow Tuesday's election results. One of those, what happens will impact the possible influence of these Arkansans in the next Congress. Three of Arkansas's House members could become committee chairmen if Republicans hold on to the chamber. Representative Rick Crawford of Jonesboro in March announced he wants the top spot on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Representative French Hill of Little Rock hopes to become the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, and Representative Bruce Westerman of Hot Springs already serves as chairman of the House Natural Resources Committee, and he has no plans to leave that top Republican spot. As for Representative Steve Womack of Rogers, he has become a senior House appropriator during his nearly 14 years on Capitol Hill. He currently leads the Appropriations Subcommittee handling transportation, housing, and urban development matters. Hill telling the Democrat Gazette that Arkansas's possible influence in the next Congress shows the delegation is focused on getting things accomplished. They do their homework, they build coalitions, they work real hard to be policy and communication and issue leaders uh, in the House. I think that's a compliment to our state and to the hard work of the delegation. In the Senate, Arkansas's two senators could wield tremendous influence. Bozeman is in line to become chairman of the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee. Cotton is not seeking a committee chairmanship, but rather a spot on the Senate GOP leadership team. Arkansas's junior senator wants to be chairman of the Senate Republican Conference, the third-ranking position among Senate Republicans. He says that conference chairman position gives an opportunity for the title holder to drive the priorities of Senate Republicans and share those positions with a larger audience. I'll have a bigger role than I've had in the past as a senator if I'm elected to conference chair. Arkansas has had a notable presence on Capitol Hill in the past. 
Democratic Senator William Fulbright chaired the Senate Foreign Relations Committee from 1959 through 1974. Democratic Representative Wilbur Mills led the House Ways and Means Committee from 1958 to January 1975. Democratic Senator Blanche Lincoln presided over the Senate Agriculture Committee from September 2009 to January 2011. John C. Davis is a teaching associate professor of political science at the University of Arkansas. His work has involved studying the political changes in the natural state. He says the potential for Arkansas's lawmakers to have a significant influence on public policy comes a decade into Republicans' domination of the state's political landscape. All of them now have enjoyed uh, some measure of tenure uh, in office, and with that come some opportunities for them to explore maybe other opportunities on other committees or stay the path. And um, should their parties be in the majority, uh, we know that there's opportunities for ranking members to become uh, chairs uh, in, in relatively short order. Democrats have not held a single congressional office representing Arkansans in nearly 10 years. Davis notes having three House members chair separate committees would be a daunting task for each, but it would be a great opportunity for Arkansas to shape national politics. It's really quite a statement to the state's current politics and also the stability in its politics uh, that you could potentially have three of our four House members in such important roles. The current Congress has to first complete its five scheduled weeks of legislative business. Senators and House members will return to Capitol Hill on November 12th, hoping to finish all of its lingering tasks before the holidays. A bipartisan House group pushing a measure to provide emergency assistance to farmers. The Farm Act comes as producers across the country continue to struggle with high input costs, unable to increase prices or yields to counter this problem. Representative Crawford is among the bill's sponsors. The Jonesboro congressman serves on the House Agriculture Committee. He says inflation and interest rates have had a tremendous impact on farmers and their operations. This is an unusual time. We're seeing prices across the board are faltering, but what's, what's spiking in, in, across the country is production costs. The Department of Agriculture in September projected a 4.4% decline in national net farm income for the calendar year. That was before Hurricane Helene and Milton brought devastation and heavy rainfall across the South. Crawford says there is an urgent need for Congress to do something. I'm hearing from farmers that are just really holding out hope that we're able to do something to provide some relief. Otherwise, we may not see them again. Senator Bozeman issued a call to action in September. The Senate and House have yet to pass a new farm bill authorizing agriculture, nutrition, and rural development programs. The most recent statute expired September 30th. Bozeman and other agriculture leaders left Washington hoping to use the October recess to make inroads on a bipartisan and bicameral plan capable of reaching President Joe Biden's desk. And that will do it for this edition of Arkeys in the Beltway for the week of November 3rd, 2024. You can stay up to date with all news involving Arkansas at ArkansasOnline.com. You can get in touch with me on social media. My handle is at Alex House Thomas. Special thanks as always to the team down in Little Rock. I'm Alex Thomas, and this has been Arkeys in the Beltway. Thanks for listening.